Let's talk about Reform UK. So Nigel Farage is at a press conference at Dover. Um, he says that Dover is the front line of the great national debate on immigration, both illegal and legal. They've just announced that Howard Cox, the founder of Fairfield UK, who stood as the Tory, sorry, Theresa Reform, um, a London mayoral candidate, uh, they, they've confirmed he's going to stand as a candidate in Dover and Deal. Um, but crucially, what Rich, Nigel Farage has been in the news of is he's challenged Rishi Sunak to a TV immigration debate, said so he won't debate me on television on this big issue, he's running scared. I mean, is that quite true? Because at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of Nigel Farage, he's been an absolute leader on this issue, but he, he isn't actually the leader of the party. Mm -hmm. He's not an MP. He's not a candidate to be an MP. I mean, Rishi Sunak could just as well debate anybody on this yeah, issue. Absolutely. And I think it would be a lot harder for Sunak to turn down yeah. a debate with him if he had properly thrown his hat into the ring, if he had come back to lead the party, or at yeah. least actually was contesting a seat, so could be his seen choice. to have much more skin in the game. So I think in a, in a sense, and this is probably why a big part of the reason why the Tories called the election in such a surprise fashion is because they wanted to wrong foot reform. They wanted to make sure that if Farage was going to choose a seat, he wouldn't be in a position to have done so by the time the actual election rolled yeah. around. So I think it's one of those things that would just be all too easy for Rishi Sunak to deflect, even though it is a really important issue. And you would think, from the Conservatives' point of view, trying to look strong on this issue, where obviously Labour do not look particularly strong, would be useful to them. But I think they just don't want to almost... Um, give reform the benefit of being seen as a kind of peer at this point, if, if yeah. they were to engage yeah, in that. Yeah, there is that, isn't there? I mean, in terms of the, the threat that reform are, are making to to the Conservative Party, there's no doubt at all that there's, there is threat. As an internal polling seen by the newspapers suggests that um, reform could basically lose the Tories 100 seats. It doesn't mean reform will take those mm -hmm. seats. Uh, it means that they will basically split the right-wing vote and then Labour, uh, largely Labour part seats, but other, other seats, it might be uh, uh, Lib Dems, others will, will win those. Is that an issue? I mean, we've just had, I mean, our outgoing Tory MP Lucy Allen in Telford, she uh, announced that she was supporting the reform candidate in her local constituency. Mm -hmm. um, she's already stood down. Um, she has, apparently has, she, we were told she'd been, she'd lost the party whip, actually she'd already resigned from the party. Um, but that's quite significant, isn't it? A prominent MP? Oh, absolutely. And I think it's something which, it's probably part of the calculations to why they moved quite quickly. They were worried about more issues like this. They were worried about more potential defections, mm. more potential endorsements of reform candidates from Tory MPs. And I get the argument they're making as far as a vote for reform is a vote for Labour, but it comes to a certain point where people should expect to have a choice. They shouldn't, if you've been a Conservative voter for many years and you voted for a series of Conservative governments that said they'd reduce immigration to the tens of thousands or that we yeah. do all kinds of things yeah. which they have fundamentally failed to do, for them to say, you've got to back us just one more time because Keir Starmer will be an inch worse than us. It, it's not going to it, stand up for many it people. Doesn't, it, it really doesn't. If you read letters pages of the, you know, the right-wing papers, people are just despairing a lot of the time, aren't they? Um, let's also um, uh, talk about what uh, uh, Rachel Reeves is saying, Shadow Chancellor. She's uh, giving a speech right now as well. She is talking about sort of business and the economy and how important that is. And uh, we have a, um, a, a, a letter that's been written to the Times from 120 business leaders, we're told. Actually, they're just business people I don't think many of them are leaders I mean no but like with all due respect you know um, they're not they're, you know they, they run successful businesses but they're kind of the usual suspects but they're backing Labour to achieve U the UK's full economic potential they include the chef Tom Kerridge the founder of Wikipedia Jimmy Wales uh, the former CEO of Heathrow JP Morgan Aston Martin I mean again JP Morgan I mean all all the, I mean, frankly, it's just Ramona Central, is, as far as I can tell. I mean, certainly um, Jimmy Wells, who, who lives here, he's an American. Mm -hmm. I did a question time with him many years ago. Um, and um, I have to say, he knew nothing about anything. I mean, we were all chatting about, oh, what, store, what questions might come up? You're not given an advance mm -hmm. what the questions are. So you often chat with your fellow um, uh, participants. And um, he, I mean, he was so unaware of major news stories that yeah. week. It was sort of... Why are you here? I mean, it wasn't like, oh, did you hear about some no mark MP somewhere who did something a month yeah. ago? It was, you know, what had been front page news, BBC website every day for, for three weeks and he didn't know anything about it. And I thought, well, this man's endorsement doesn't really fill me with any uh, encouragement. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, when you see these letters, which is, of course, do not just spontaneously happen, the Labour Party, we've got these people together and said, we need this endorsement. I get the message they're trying to send is that we're a safe pair of hands. In fact, Jimmy Wells said exactly those words on um, another um, 
station earlier today. But at the same time, you think these people, first of all, are going to be have a self-interest in certain policies being pursued. But also the idea that these people are like philosopher kings, you know exactly... Yeah. What's yes. going to happen? These are all people who, were, as you were saying, were preaching fire and brimstone if we even just voted to leave, let alone actually yeah. left. So the idea that they have, they have about as much credibility in my mind as if you've got the, uh, the hundred top plumbers together <laughs> to say what they thought about things. I well, take their uh, views No, I would take their views much more much seriously, more seriously running small businesses backbone of the nation.